Jokic is entering what typically has been a very important year for superstar players, year eight, uh, experience-wise. And that has been a year where some of like the greats of the NBA have won their first championship. So it's it's interesting. I know it's tough to think about like Nikola Jokic NBA champion. Like that sounds weird because we haven't seen it. And because he's looked his teams, I should say not him, but his teams have looked so overmatched in some of these playoff rounds the last couple of years. It's like tough to imagine this. Um, but all I'm telling you is that if you just look at like his career up to this point, like, you know, made all NBA teams, then like competed for an MVP, then won back-to-back MVP awards. Now he's entering year eight. Like the first seven years of his career looks a lot like LeBron or like Michael right? Jordan or like yeah, these players. It, it looks exactly like this. He doesn't look like them, but it looks exactly like this. Denver wins the NBA championship. Um, capping off was a pretty incredible postseason run by the entire team. And of course, the great Nikola Jokic, who becomes the first player in the history of the National Basketball Association to lead all players in points, rebounds, and assists in a single postseason. He is obviously your NBA Finals MVP. You nailed it last week on the show when you were like, it's amazing that Jimmy Butler can like could, could do whatever he wants and basically avoid criticism. Like he never gets criticized for anything. And I'm not even suggesting like he should be criticized. He's probably not a hundred percent, but like that is one of the weirdest games you would see from like a quote unquote, like super duper star in a big spot. He's non-existent the entire game. Then he goes absolutely nuclear for like three minutes in the fourth quarter. And you're thinking, oh my God, he's going to lead the team back. And like, maybe they're going to win here and get back to South Beach for game six. And who knows what happens. And then the final couple of minutes, and I was kind of thinking, like, I, who who is he right now? It's kind of an insult to this player because he's a, a Hall of Fame caliber player. He turns it to Russell Westbrook at the end of the game. Like, this Russell Westbrook turning the basketball over, like, dribbling into three people, stopping. Like, what are you doing, man? Like, Butler's supposed to be this unflappable player. Like, he might not be the best player, but he's gritty. He makes the right decision. Like, he's not going to do anything stupid to hurt the team. And in the final couple minutes of the final game of the year, all he's doing are things that are stupid. All he's doing is hurting the team. What the hell happened with Jimmy Butler? And like, are we now at the point where someone can actually say Butler stunk last night and not have it be, oh, well, well, you know, he's not 100%. Or, well, you know, the players around him, they didn't do such a great job. Or like, oh, he was so gritty with the defense he played. How about this? He stunk out loud last night. And had like a brief stretch where he was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'll start playing. Maybe I'll look like Michael Jordan tonight. And then just kept dribbling into people and, and throwing the ball away. I could have done that for a lot less money. I I didn't get it. I didn't get it, Ken. The whole the Jimmy Butler experience last night was a weird one to me. So just a funny season, like a really like an, an interesting team in so many ways. Um, but not to take the shine away from Jokic who like is the best player in the league and what does the best player in the league do all the time? Like accumulate, I'll just say playoff success. Doesn't have to be a lot of titles, but just playoff success. I was going to say, so like next year in the NBA finals, if it's like Suns Celtics, just like throwing that out there as a potential matchup. And I say, I want to bet Boston. I would like for like someone to like come to my house and punch me in the face. Yeah. Denver, Boston. I, yes, which is I a very realistic finals for but next yeah, year. Yes, we almost and, got it this and, year, and, and those yeah. are the two teams. And we'll spin it forward here. But I just, I, I want someone to hit me if this happens next <laughs> year. Like I deserve to be punished. Well, you can be right though. Like the, I mean, like the 04 Pistons but in this won. Sport, they you won. Can't be though, right? But yeah. in this sport, like you can't be right about. Well, that. I just wouldn't bet on it. That's my thing. Like the 04 Pistons can win, but like, great. If, yeah, if you told me ahead of time, like, yeah, Jokic and Jamal Murray actually despise each other, and Malone is, like, act, like pitting them against each other, and nobody knows what to do, and the entire thing's a circus. Oh, yeah, okay, then maybe I like the heat a little bit. <laughs> like, okay, I kind of like that, but that obviously didn't happen in this series. The reason why last year's finals was so interesting is most times you get a final, when you get a finals with a team with one of these guys, I call them title superstars a lot when I talk about them on the show, and when I write about title it. stars. You have a team with a title, a team with a title superstar. And a team that doesn't really look like that. Butler is like an interesting case, but like, let's just kind of say like they didn't have one for this conversation. What usually happens in those series, uh, Lakers heat bubble, perfect example. Um, when, it, when you get those series, the team with the really good player is a huge favorite. So like, it isn't even like a great betting opportunity because the team that has that player, the market understands that that player or that team is much more likely to win. Luca 
it's a, it's still, and I know like the way we all break, we'll do this with Wembenyama too. We will be guilty of it. We're like in year two, we'll be like, well, is it time for him to make the finals yet? It's like, not really how it works, guys. Like Jokic just got there. This was year eight. <laughs> like eight. And I won two like, MVPs. Luke, if, if, if Luka is on the same trajectory as Nikola Jokic, this seat, like, again, think about how we think about Jokic. Like, oh, one of the top six, five, six centers ever, guy who's now accomplished everything. If Luka was on his exact same career trajectory, his first MVP would be this year. This year coming up right now. He would have won nothing already. Would have won absolutely nothing. Would, like he's done. He's won absolutely nothing so far. So, like, if he won the MVP, he's actually on the Jokic path. Isn't that insane? We should prob- probably mention the uh, the team that made it to the NBA Finals and didn't win this year. Sure. That would be the Miami Heat, right? And we'll see kind of like what Pat Riley and hashtag Coach Spo do with the roster. Obviously, I have a couple players who are going to be free agents. We didn't. We barely saw Tyler Hero in the postseason. Butler will obviously back Miami, sitting at twenty-five to one. I think with the Heat, it's um, they they do feel like their ceiling is capped if this is the roster construction. But I mean, man, ca- being capped at making the NBA Finals, teams would kill for that ceiling. Uh, but that does feel a little bit like their ceiling. They ran into the Lakers. They ran into they ran into LeBron. They ran into Jokic, or they ran into LeBron and Anthony Davis. Really, Davis might have been the better player in the playoffs, and they ran into Jokic. And it was uh, they got outclassed both times, and that's okay because every team's going to get outclassed by those teams, basically. But are they ever going to be that team that outclasses the whatever the version of Miami is in this situation? Probably not. So don't love them. But if you told me they made some kind of it doesn't even be a significant upgrade, a significant change, then yeah, like they're you know they got the best coach, they got a a good best player, not the best best player, but like a good best player, and they have a really good second best player. Everybody slides down a rung. Spolster's the coach. They made the finals twice. Sure, it can happen. I I would not bet them with the roster constructed this way to win a championship. Everything else is probably on the table for them because they've shown an ability to achieve it already. For joining us right now, the aforementioned, the great Matt Moore from the Action Network. And a sincere thank you to our guy, Matt Moore, who's been coming on with us since 2019, since the start of You Better You Bet comes on with us the entire NBA season in the off season too. And we do the NBA draft. One of the nicest guys, one of the sharpest guys love having him on the show. And we sincerely appreciate him. Tell me if you think anything stands out at the price. Ken and I will do this later in the show. Denver is the favorite plus 500, the Celtics 550, Milwaukee 6-1, to one, Phoenix at 7, Golden State, the Lakers and the Sixers all at 12, Dallas and the Clippers at 20, Cleveland, M- Memphis is funny, Cleveland, Memphis, and Miami at 25, New Orleans, Sacramento at 30, my New York Knicks at 40. At the prices, do any of those teams stand out to you in the title market for next year? So I always make three bets after the end of the season. Uh, hit in two years ago with the Warriors. Miss on last year went Sun, Sixers, um, and Clippers, and for various reasons those all fell short. Had pretty good, all got got them to the second round except for the Clippers. Uh, I'll do that this year, and I will tell you two of the teams I've settled on, and I got to figure out the third. First one's gonna be the Warriors. Look, they had a bad year. They just had a bad season. That happens. No one played well. The bench was a disaster. The rookies, Wiseman was a was a joke. Yes, Myers is gone, but there's enough of a core there. I think they'll add pieces, and there's value on 12-1 to 1 for a team that has won so many championships. Steph is still so good, and they'll probably, like, I will have some level of faith that there's a window there. What I'm looking for is windows of, like, can you improve? And the other one, and God, I cannot believe I'm going to do this, Costas. It's the Knicks at 40-1. to 1. They yeah. have the number two offense in the NBA. They made the second round. They have a dynamic point guard. The defense showed signs, but the bigger thing here is what they have to work with. The Knicks have assets. Like, they can package Julius Randle and some draft picks. That's a not terrible package. It's not good, but it's not a terrible package for finding the kind of upgrades that could get you over the hump. Do they need another star? Probably. But there are windows here for them to be able to get there. At that number, (laughs) circle, circle, exclamation point, at that number – I actually do think there's some value on putting a long shot in on the Knicks because of their runway leading into next season. 